So good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very, very much for coming. Um, this is a, uh, uh, we usually have our select board meetings on Tuesdays and at the town hall. And this is a Monday meeting, and it is uh, obviously not in town hall, and we only have one issue to discuss. So um, we've been saying that this is a special meeting of the select board, but I think they're all very special. Um, when we talk about sewer allocation and uh, budgets, it's, uh, it's even more exciting than this. Um, but in any event, thank you very much for coming. This is an important community uh, issue that we are uh, working our way through. And uh, we are here tonight for an informational session um, for uh, basically presented by the steering committee for the Community Center Scoping and Library Assessment and Presentation. Um, I'm going to turn it almost immediately over to our town manager, Eric Wells, who will um, give an outline for tonight's presentation. Um, did just want to say um, that the, the committee and the town staff and the uh, engineers and everybody have worked very hard to gather as much data as possible to listen to as many people as they possibly can. Um, and to also say that this is a presentation that uh, we are ourselves on the select board are hearing for the first time tonight as well. This is not a town meeting, although this is where we have them. It might be a little uh, disconcerting uh, because there's not going to be a vote anytime soon. There's not going to be a decision that's made uh, anytime soon. Uh, in any way, you can, you can talk about whether or not we go forward at, at all. Um, uh, but this is a uh, this is going to be a good opportunity to get more information. And so again, I thank you very much uh, for being here, and I'm going to turn it over to our town manager, Eric Wells. Good evening, everyone. Usually, I'm on the floor at town meetings. This feels a little different. It's not much of a performer, plays or anything. So, appreciate you all being here this evening. Um, this has been a, a great project that the Senate Committee has been working on for the last almost year. Uh, I was thinking about the last time we gathered in this room at town meeting and the Senate Committee was kicking off their public outreach outside as people walked into town meeting. So seven months later, here, here we are again to, to follow up and share the work this evening. So the committee has prepared its draft report as directed in the committee charge that was adopted by the Select Board July of 20. The committee was tasked with undertaking a comprehensive community engagement process and working with our architectural consultant, Black River Design, to evaluate different space configurations for community center, recreation, and library spaces in town. So as, as Chairman Kenny mentioned, this evening the select board will receive a presentation on the findings of the committee and a discussion on the next steps to consider in advancing this project further. Again, this report is a scoping and feasibility study. It serves as a starting point for a project with its potential scope. You can read the report of the committee on the town website. It's about 60, 70 pages in the text and a number of other appendices that we're all aware of as well to look at. We also have a couple of hard copies we'll have available at town hall and then in the library you know, to look at it in that format. This report provides guidance to the select board to help answer some critical questions when considering future space needs for the library and the concept of a community center with recreation facility. The intent of this stage of the project was to define the needs for these spaces, what the community would like to see in these spaces, and how to consider different possible space configurations based on these needs to form an initial draft project scope. The discussion and decision point for the select board in the coming meetings, we did decide whether to advance this project and allocate funding for its next stage, that would encompass site analysis and selection for a community center facility and schematic design for the community center and library edition that will be presented tonight. The diagrams and preliminary cost figures included in the report are meant to be a reference, a starting point for the project and undergo much refinement moving forward. The overall question of project funding and financing is a critical component of our discussion and will dictate the final scope determination if the select board decides to advance the project further. I'm pleased to report to the select board this evening that this has been a very extensive process with a high degree of community engagement. A special thanks goes to the steering committee members for their dedication to this process and engaging discussions throughout. It's been a pleasure to provide staff support to this work. I'd also like to welcome this evening our library trustees and recreation and park committee members who are in attendance. And I'll, I'll pause now and I'd like to introduce Carla Carstens, a member of the library board of trustees who served as committee chair to say a few words. Hello, everyone. Um, as 
Eric mentioned, this has been kind of a long but really interesting process that we've been through almost a whole year. And I want to thank everyone, especially who participated in the in the in-person interviews and also filled out the online surveys. All of your data was was compiled and read and discussed, and um, it helped bring us to where we are right now today. Um, I'd like to introduce the other members of the committee, and if, I, if they could please stand. So, Greta D'Agostino is our select board rep. Bob Metz is the rep committee rep. Mary Claire McGovern is a community member rep. John Butterfield, another community member rep. And then McClintock, another community member rep. I'd also like to thank um, um, the library director, Jane Kern, and the recreation parks director, Todd Goodwin, for their guidance and expertise and attendance at many, uh, at literally almost every one of the meetings. Um, our committee met 14 times between November 2022 and October 2023. And it was um, really interesting how we all, you know, kind of ended up becoming a cohesive group at the end. It was a great process, and I'm very happy and proud that of all the work that we, we've done. Um, I also want to thank, um, oh, okay. So I want to thank Melissa Kane of Iceberg Consulting, who had the task of getting this started at the very beginning, when it was such a big project that I don't think anyone who was on the committee really knew where we were going to go. And somehow we were able to do that. And then also to, um, let's see. Oh, and to Marisol for her work as a library consultant. Thank you very much. And um, let's see. Oh, so, so, um, okay. I'm kind of nervous here, too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a script here, but. Um, so, also um, to Black River Design for leading the project and focusing all of the committee's energy into a well thought out process to arrive at tonight's report. And um, I do want to mention again, for those of you that participated, that we started with phase one, with the in-person interviews, and then phase two for the online interviews. And then all of that data was compiled, many, many, many discussions, really interesting ones. And now we're where we're at now with this wonderful report. And so I'm going to introduce, actually thank all the people at Black River Design and introduce John Humphrey from Black River Design to take it next. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, if I, I'm used to projecting my voice, so if this is too loud, then somebody just put your hands over your ears or something, but I'll try to modulate on my volume a little bit. Um, so thank you all for coming. Um, 14 times, huh, Carla? Who was, who, who was counting? <laughs> Um, I, will, I will kind of reiterate what Carla said. This has been a fantastic group to work with. Um, we got really good feedback from them. Uh, they, they kind of worked through and talked through all the issues as we went along. And I think we came to a really nice consensus in, in the end. And, and we'll, get, we'll get into that a little more specifically here uh, in a moment. Um, so again, as, as Eric said, the, you know, the charge was to, to gauge the demand for the, the community outreach process um, for both um, the, the programming and facilities for both the, the recreation department and for the uh, for the, the Dorothy Allen Memorial Library. Um, then we were asked to determine the specific space needs and finally to recommend a configuration to uh, a joint meeting of the select board and uh, library trustees. And I know that they're both well represented here tonight. <coughs> so <coughs> and as uh, as Carla mentioned, we went through a fairly rigorous process that uh, we really did think about beforehand. We took this one step at a time. We went through the data gathering. And you can see there's five yellow squares there. We, we gathered a lot of data from a lot of different sources. And, uh, secondly, then after that, we went through a period of processing that information where we were doing some diagrams, and you'll see some of those here tonight. 
And finally, then, there was the analysis, the discussion, and, and ultimately some recommendations. And, and we really were very rigorous about going through in that order, because if you try to jump ahead to the conclusions without gathering all the data, you are, are in danger of coming to the wrong conclusions. So <clears throat> we, as Carla mentioned, we went through a um, work with, with Melissa Kane at, at Iceberg Consulting, who helped really design a process here that was intended to, to reach as many people in our community as, as possible. And I'm sorry, I had to use the word our because I live here. Um, so in, in the Williston community, we, uh, as you can see here, the committee uh, did 184 interviews representing 270 respondents. Uh, they then did the online survey in which 757 completed surveys were turned in and that represented over 2,000 people. Now, you add those together, that's about 2,400. Wilson only has 10,000 residents, plus or minus. So that's well over 20% response rate. Uh, that is an amazing number for, for a process like this. So again, we, we did the, the interviews. We used these uh, answers and the data received here to, uh, to formulate questions for phase two. So you can see here that we, uh, we grouped spaces into five categories. We grouped activities into six, and, uh, and, then, and then really went set about uh, uh, seeking information on, on, on those pieces. Um, as you can see here, um, the, the results indicated that people wanted an, an expanded library and an intergenerational community meeting and gathering space that includes the following program areas. A large gym, kitchen, classroom space, meeting rooms, fitness space, senior center, rental space and community rooms, technology and computer access, maker space, and pool. So what did we learn? We learned a couple of things. <laughs> we learned that the, the Dorothy Allen Memorial Library is a highly valued town institution, both a physical and emotional cornerstone of our community. We learned there is a strong demand for accessible multi-generational community spaces, especially among families and seniors. This was the number one request from seniors. We also learned that there's an amazing number of things that people in Wilson are interested in doing. <laughs> and we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, finally, I, I do need to mention up front here real quick that a swimming pool facility is clearly the most off-mentioned amenity with strong opinions, both pro and con. Um, and, and now I'll draw your attention to the, to the word cloud here because I think this actually is pretty accurate representation of what was heard. Um, you can see pool is a very big word here, but the biggest word right here is thank you. It was amazing how many people in this process said thank you for asking. Thank you for, for asking for my opinion. Thank you for, for asking what I think. Um, and, and, and they really responded. You really responded. Um, so you can see there the thank you is big, pool is big, but your community, senior space, right here, expand library. Um, and then uh, transportation is another big word on there. And, we, and remember that as we move forward in this presentation. So, why does Williston need an expanded library? Williston is growing. The library space has stayed the same since 1998. The population here has increased by 50%. The Dorothy Allen Memorial Library serves the 13th largest population of Vermont while ranking 22nd for library square footage. The library ranked first, number one, for program attendance across all Vermont libraries. Physical circulation ranked fourth among Vermont libraries. And that is all while the current collections and accessibility of those spaces are limited by an undersized facility. And if you've been in there, you'll know. So as we looked at this, we also did a little benchmarking, working with, with Mara and Jane, 
Um, and I know that this is probably pretty small to see, but this is a list of some of the other libraries in the area or in the state. Um, a couple things that I can just note from there, the, the, the Brownell Library in Essex serves approximately the same population. It has 50% more space in the building. The Pearson Library in Shelburne, I'd say a pure community to ours, um, is, uh, has a smaller population, but 75% more space. They do have a relatively newly enlarged library. Um, and then, so then lastly, and, and, and we're going to not spend a lot of time on this, but we did spend a lot of time on this in the committee work, which is we actually went through and identified individual spaces or all the different individual spaces that would be needed or desired in the, in, in the library. We added them up, we went back and forth about how big does it need to be and, and whatnot. At the bottom, we came up with something that was just over 17,000 square feet. The existing building is around 9,500. So similarly, we asked the question, why does Willison need a community center? Well, the first thing that everyone had me do when, when I got hired to do this was, you should read the 2006 task force report. Well, guess what? That one said the same thing. It's, uh, but it, it's only what? 17, 17 years later, we still are hearing loud and strong that we need a senior center or a community center. Um, we have limited space available in the community for, for uh, programming. Places like uh, spaces used with the Old Brick Church, other churches, the fire department, the police department, etc., cetera, and, and most frequently in the schools. Um, but all of those have scheduling restrictions, and some have accessibility issues that make it really difficult to put all programs there on a consistent basis. The, the, uh, the local school district, uh, the Champlain Valley School District, charges the recreation department for space uh, use after school and on weekends, and I think probably in the summer too. So, <clears throat> finally, um, if there was some proprietary space that the, that the town controlled, that would allow the recreation department to offer and run a much broader range of community programs in a central location. So, and then the last thing is, is some of you are probably aware there's the, the new rec zone was opened up actually during our uh, committee process. And while that has, um, has demonstrated the value of community center space managed by the town, the problem is that many programs are offered by the rec department, but only one program can can run at the rec center at any given time. It's just a single space. A new community center would have a number of different spaces that could run many programs at different time or at the same time. So, and here was just a little example of some of those activities that we uh, that we identified. The top five being adult fitness, art classes, cooking classes. That's why you'll see a kitchen in here. Educational classes, adult sports and pickup programs. And then if you go further into the top 10, you'll see that both youth sports programs and senior fitness programs are included. So, and then here we have the same uh, program of space needs that we, we put together a list of. Um, the number at the bottom here, you can see right there, is approximately 34,000 square feet. That was what we've been calling the, the base facility. Those are the things that we felt were needed at the outset, regardless of, uh, of, of, of what ultimately happens here. We also identified a couple of other functions that would be very good to have, that there, we felt that the, the public outreach uh, process identified, but perhaps were more than we wanted to, to take on immediately. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go forward. But that's another additional 18,500 square feet that includes an additional gym space, perhaps with a turf surface, um, and also the pool that we've been talking about. So I think this committee has been made sure to, to, to take that pool into consideration as we, we move forward because it was such a, a strong response there. So, from the outset, Black River Design was asked to look at four different configurations of how this project might play out in the community or be, or be housed in the community. The first was 
a new community center paired with a renovation and addition of the existing library. The second was a new community center and a separate but new library. Thirdly, a new community center that would include a branch library, meaning that the existing library would, would stay uh, as in, in play as well. And then lastly, it was a new joint community center that included a new library all in a single facility. So the first option was included the uh, adding on to or, or renovating the existing library. What we learned, we spent some time walking through, climbing up in the attic, looking at the, uh, the ventilation equipment, and examining the lovely basement down there, um, and seeing where the bats lived. <laughs> um, but what we found, in general, is that the, 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 the building is structurally sound. This, as you can imagine, the systems that are in there, that are at least 20 to 25 years old, when the last edition happened, um, are getting old and tired, out of date. Um, we can do a lot better than that now, especially on the energy efficiency, mechanical systems, ventilation, lighting, and whatnot. So that, all that, regardless of what happens here, is, is equipment and, and systems in the building that are getting older fast. The, we, we learned that the school district actually owns the land where the library sits, um, but we have had very preliminary conversations that indicated that that is not going to be an obstacle necessarily to, to proceeding in, in this direction. Um, we learned that the traffic and parking um, are things that can be problematic on the site um, and that there would be some improvements in those areas would be strongly desired should we move ahead with the renovation project. So in the end, and we'll show you a little more of that in a minute, but uh, in the end, we felt that if you were to expand on the site, the best way to do that would be a two-story addition at the rear of the library that connected both the adult and children wings of the building. And that's for, for several reasons. One, it minimized that visual impact from the road. It <coughs> consumed the least amount of space on the town green, where we all know that this library sits. Um, so we felt that that was really the best, the best way and the best place to put an addition there. Um, the other piece that, uh, that we, we've got going here is that the um, was the idea that if we're going to try to provide additional parking for this library, the best, least intrusive space to put it would be up here on the um, uh, on the corner of the site here in front of the of the old school building. There, uh, we recognize. Oh, you can go back. We recognize this is a sensitive area to be putting parking, and I think everyone knows that going ahead, if we were to do this, we've got to be extremely sensitive to how this this happened. Um, but there is opportunities here for, for landscaping, and, and perhaps that's a function with some, some type of the proper kind of paving there that this would actually enhance the, the green. Uh, that would certainly be part of the design process and moving forward if we were to continue on this front. So, and, and this is, I think this is a really good diagram that shows how that might sit on the site. So we've got, there, there's the, the old brick portion of the building here. This is a section through. Um, through the, the old brick portion with the basement underneath, the new offices beside it, and the courtyard in here, and that's looking at the children's wing beyond. And then this would be the new two-story piece. And to, to, to have this fit on the site, the site actually, as you know, slopes away behind there. And so this would drop down about half a level. So as you come in the front door and go through the library, you would either go up a half level or down a half level to get to this library. So you don't really have the sense that you're kind of above yourself at any point in the library. And not only that, but then the top of the roof is actually not very much taller than the building that's there right now. So we really felt that a, 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 an option like this would be uh, the least um, intrusive of, of the site. So the second option that we were, we were asked to look at was a new library to go along with the community center. Um, and again, these, these might look like floor plans, but we're, we're really trying to call these diagrams. Uh, 
as you move forward with any kind of design, we would actually put walls and doors and whatnot in here. But these are the right size spaces for things like the multi or the meeting space for the adult collections uh, or the adult computer uh, area. Um, but what we learned is that we, with the new library, you get the expanded, um, the expanded collection areas. Um, you get the uh, meeting space enhanced. There was a strong feeling that the historical society wants to stay with the library, regardless of where it's located. And finally, there was this, what we're calling an atrium here, this big round circle, but there's a space in, in the library that would be extremely useful that was kind of a gathering space, a social space. Right now, it's the front entryway where everyone's rubbing shoulders and trying to check out books all at the same time. Uh, so that's another function that we've been felt was, was important. Um, The third option that, that we were asked or tasked to look at was the idea of a branch library in a community center. And we didn't do any diagrams here because before we even got there, I think we realized that there were some real um, impediments to making that work. Um, first off, it would require staffing for two buildings. It would require a collection for for both buildings, so that becomes a redundant collection at each site, or each site only has half the books that they really wanted, or you had a particular book that you wanted, you could only get it at one place, and you had to go to the other one to get it. So, um, it, it, uh, uh, without a huge increase in staffing, it would mean, therefore, that you'd be starting to reduce the hours that one branch or the other was open. And, um, it, really doesn't address the accessibility issues that are in the existing library, nor does it, nor does it address the, uh, the outdated and, and uh, aging systems that are in there. And then, oops, wasn't there one more one? No? We must have decided not to mention that. <laughs> uh, there, I, I, I will just, I'll just add that then. Uh, <laughs> There were some real logistics, I think, issues that are involved with, um, and I guess that was up here, the complex logistical process that you're trying to move books from one room, one building to the other to get it where they needed to be on a kind of a snap basis. Um, so, uh, so, so that's, that's good. Enough. So now we, we looked at the community center. What might a new community center look like? Um, it, in the end, we said it's, it's, a, it's a large gym that can be divided into two, two pieces for multiple activities at the same time. Um, it has a uh, cardio and weightlifting area. Uh, it has a fitness studio down here near the front door for, for classes. It has um, some community spaces here, including a larger space with a kitchen in there for a lot of different things, birthday parties, um, anything that you would have where you might not have a dinner for your, your club or your group, um, as well as meeting spaces and classroom spaces. Um, and then the other thing we noticed is, you know, it's obviously with, with athletic facilities, you need locker rooms. So those are here, but they were put in place in a spot where they could be expanded if we wanted to go to our, 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 our full um, build out and we um, added a pool on there. We also then had room here for the second gym. And that's what we're, we're calling this the, the expanded community and recreation center. Actually, as we go further into this, you'll see that. Um, so that's what we're talking about when we say expanded opposed to the base. The base is, if we go back um, there, that's the, the smaller version versus the expanded. So, right there. So, and then the last option that we were asked to look at was the joint facility. So what are the benefits of a joint facility? There's potential for greater intergenerational engagement. The idea that this is a one-stop shop for programs and, and for access via public transportation or, or whatever. Um, that, uh, and in addition, one of the, the advantages is that there are some spaces that might be shared between the library and the, and the community center. 
So, uh, you know, there, there might be a, a little bit of a cost savings, and I know it says a million dollars, and I said that was a little, doesn't feel like a little, but it is. <laughs> um, so, here's the other question that, uh, that the, the, the group spent a fair amount of time on. I wanted to say here before we start to throw any of the numbers up here on the screen, these are, these are all based on the idea that a square foot of new, new space, like a library, costs $500 a square foot. That sounds like a tremendous amount, but as you, you're probably aware, we've gone through a highly inflationary period lately, especially with construction costs. We also have no idea when this would actually be built. So I can tell you that this is exactly the right amount for the exact date that this is going to be uh, constructed. Um, the other thing, yeah, <laughs> I just teased it. Uh, the other thing to remember is that that, I said that was for, for a library space, for example. But there are some things that cost a lot more per square foot, a swimming pool, for example. Um, there are other things that might cost less. Uh, just a, a classroom wing of a building is actually fairly inexpensive because it's a bunch of big spaces without a lot of, of, of plumbing and whatnot in it. So anyway, we adjusted different pieces of each of these options, multiplied it by the square footage, and came up with a number. They also include what we call soft costs, which are things like permitting fees, design fees, contingencies to make sure that you stay within your budget and whatnot. So these, are, these would be projected as project costs, not just construction costs. But anyway, let's, let's get on with this, huh? So here we go, the, the expanded joint facility. This is all in. This is the community center with the pool, with the second gym, with the library connected to it. Um, this is what, 50, 60,000 square feet or more. Um, $48.5 million. Plus the land acquisition and site development. So this doesn't include purchasing any land because we have no way of projecting what that might be because we don't know what you're buying. Um, so if you wanted to separate that and do a recreation community center and a new library, and in this case, we've taken the, the, the phase components off. And you can see there that it drops from 48.5 to 32.25. That's about a 33% reduction or savings to phase the project. So that's why we're looking very seriously at, at phasing this, is to try to, to, to cut those initial costs. The next uh, option was a joint facility with the library um, included, but without the pool and the, um, and, and the additional gym. That saves another million dollars. You know, and that was that million dollars I mentioned before, where you're starting to save, save or share spaces the construction happening at the same time on the same building. So you can save a little bit of money there. And then lastly, there was the idea of the, uh, the base community center along with the library renovation. And that drops down to about 29 and three quarter million dollars. And the re is, which is about actually two and a half million dollars less than the new library. So renovating the library saves about two and a half million dollars over building an all new one. That's as low as I can get this budget right there, it was under 30. So how do we decide? This is where I got a lot of fun, right guys? <laughs> so what we did is, is we came up with this matrix here where we listed across the top the different configurations for the building. Uh, so here, you know, joint complex um, outside the village, joint complex in the village. And as you can see, what, what, we, what started to happen here is it, as hard as we tried, we couldn't totally divorce ourselves from the concept of where is this building going to be. Um, so while this matrix was being developed, it became apparent that in addition to the facility configuration, the general location made a difference in how to rank many of these different criteria that we, we've listed over here on the side. So we, we did do it so that we had options that are both outside the village and in the village. And when we say outside the village, it really became apparent that that was either in the growth center or very close nearby. So we've got the, the, uh, uh, we've got the joint complex here. We've got just the, the recreation and community center in the village and outside of the village. And then the library had three 
either outside the village, in the village, or on the existing building as a renovation. Um, and this is just a small piece of the number of criteria that we looked at. That was probably about three times that long, I think. And we asked everyone to, to think about which, which of those, which of these options work best given each of those criteria. And those criteria are things like potential future public transportation access, which actually turned out to be a really important factor as we were looking at all these things. Um, you know, other things were, um, you know, potential for greater intergenerational use and engagement. So we really tried to think of anything and everything that we could that might make a difference to say this is, a, you know, this is served better by a, a, a building in the village or out in the village or, or as a joint complex. So once we, once we got that, we said, okay, that was, that was a main piece of what we used to, to identify. And, and you know, actually, if you go back, you can see the colors on here. We, we actually put numerical values to each of these things, like a one through five, and add them up. And the ones that got the higher scores got green. The ones that got the lower scores got red. So nobody was very interested in a new library outside the village. Um, so you, know, you can see that the existing, expanding the existing library was, was good. So, um, but, but in addition to that, we looked at um, the cost comparisons that were there. Uh, the planning and zoning input, we had a, a presentation from, from um, the senior planner, Emily Heyman. Um, we talked to the energy committee um, and, and also the library and recreation department staff, I think, through their respective leaders had a fair amount to say about this. Um, all of that was kind of mixed into the pot, stirred around for quite a while. Um, and, and I would say that the committee's deliberations identified a number of siting criteria that should, should the project move forward, and that's the select board's decision, um, that those siting criteria would inform the site selection process. And we want to go over a couple of those here. So when searching for a site, these are important. The capacity for future growth, universal accessibility, access to public transportation, uh, walkability from residential neighborhoods. We're trying very hard in Williston to make our, our, our town a, a walkable place. Uh, intergenerational use. And finally, cost. We did identify a couple of additional factors involved here, basically from our talks with the town committees. The review of the town plan shows that it supports growth of recreational library services in general. It supports development of recreation in the growth center in particular. And in discussing the project with the Energy Committee, one of the most important things from their perspective was that reuse of existing buildings is important from a sustainability standpoint. So ultimately, a strong, very strong consensus form around two recommendations. One, expand the existing library in the village. And two, build a phased community recreation center in the growth center. That's pretty much where I want to end this, to, to open this up to, to, to questions. And you can see here is a, a side I put in the next steps if anybody um, is interested, but it, it essentially it has to do with the funding that Eric mentioned earlier. It's really to come up with some strategies on how best to, to fund the project. Um, we would have to select the site. We would have to go through the schematic design process to get a little more detail on all of this, uh, any of these options, estimate that cost, and then at some point, probably, request voter approval. Those are all pieces down the road and in that order just like we did our other process in this order. We would want to do it in this order this way as well. So there we, there we have it. Expand the existing library in the village and build a phased community recreation center in the growth center. That's the, that's the word from the committee.
full report is also on the town website. We have some cards and all these as an option. Next is just open community QA and questions from the board as well. I can help kind of moderate here. We have a, a lot of um, folks in the room who could weigh in and help answer questions. Um, we've got uh, steering committee members, members from library trustees, staff, members of the Recreation and Parks Committee as well. Um, so, so Ted, if you have anything else. Eric's going to continue moderating the evening from here on out, but I would ask if people uh, do have a question, um, if you can raise your hand, pair up a call, and if you can tell us your name um, and state your question, and hopefully, uh, hopefully somebody in the room will know the answer, uh, and, um, and uh, we'll proceed that way. We scheduled this for about a half hour of questions, if there are that many. Um, if there's a couple more than would take 30 minutes, we'll go a little bit extra. But uh, anyway, please absolutely feel free to ask questions or make comments or whatever is on your mind. So, thank you. We do have a microphone at the end of the aisle here now. That could be helpful. We're also recording this so we can share it with, with folks to view afterwards. So I think with that, we'll open up for any, any questions, folks. My name is Jerry Ortega, I'm a senior in the community. What, how much money is available for this so far? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, that's what the, the town has to look at here. You know, certainly there would be some uh, public bonding and debt that would need to be taken on. And we'd also, we're working with another consultant right now to look at some funding strategies to recommend. Those could include, you know, what's the viability for some grant funding, um, different financing options out there with different interest rate programs. Um, but, you know, the town has allocated ARPA funds so far to use for the scoping study. The board could decide to use ARPA funds to continue this in the next phase. But uh, from a capital standpoint, there's no capital savings for, for this project at this point. And those are the big questions that need to be answered moving forward. Thank you. Jim uh, I know that you're talking about expanding the library that's already here. But you didn't really mention any particular locations where the new community recreation center might go. Was that part of the study? Is there any, any kind of consideration of where that ideal place would be? Sure. That, that was a, a piece of this project that was really um, an element that the committee was looking at. What is the community looking for in this space? So trying to decide, you know, what's that square footage amount? To answer some of those critical questions first before trying to decide what might be the site. The, the thinking was, okay, for a building, what's kind of the, the ideal footprint, the potential for expansion? To try to get a consensus around that before searching for a site. Because once you have an idea of what type of size of building you're looking for, that would help answer questions for parking on the site and additional aspects of acquiring a site. So where the group ended was that um, looking at the growth center and outside the growth center just from a general standpoint. For the select board advances project, that would be the next part of the exercise. Looking at those criteria, um, certainly constraints on sites and seeing what's available, you know, certainly talking about private property as well, so there would be an acquisition to see what is available. So, there's that base uh, standpoint that the committee's recommended. You know, that's a starting point. You know, certainly that number, that square footage could end up being smaller. And, you know, that's going to tie it back to the cost for everything initially as well. Okay, so Carla, John, want to add? Yeah, I, I would just say that as an architect, uh, you know, having this information available to me as we started the site selection processes would be incredibly useful. Uh, it, it keeps you from kind of going down a path that you don't need to go because you found a perfect site, but guess what? It's half the size that it needs to be. Uh, and so we do know that there's a strong recommendation here for how big that wants to be, that it wants to be big enough to, uh, to, to do a, a future expansion on. Um, and I think it's really important to know about kind of where the, the feelings were that the, that community center really wants to be in the growth center. That's where the vast majority of new housing is going. If you want to talk about being walkable, to that facility. Um, it's also the most likely space where uh, public transportation is going to be available. So for the seniors to access that would be really important to have it there. So I think it really starts to make that site selection a lot simpler because there's a lot of good ideas in here that are that we can make sure that that site uh, meets. When you talk about the growth center, can you just explain what that is? 
explain what the growth center is so people have a general idea of where our town that is? Sure, thanks Greta. You know, essentially uh, the greater Taft Corners area from um, you know, Sajinju about the fire station to the east just before, uh, just before that. Um, about to the SDCU bank uh, to the north, to the south around the highway, to the west down Harvest Lane. It's kind of a rough outline of it um, in that general area of town. Oh, the red area on I, don't, I, um, I won't rule out any site potentially at this point, but I think that would certainly present some challenges with taking that park space for another facility. In the front, degree. Is there any estimate of what additional staffing would be required within the community center? Good question. So we're, we're thinking about that right now, too. You know, certainly, Deciding how large the facility is going to be is, is one component of it, but then operationally, how you know, how do you want to have that center staff? Do you want to have it open X number of hours per day on the weekends? So that's all going to play into that operating discussion as well. And it might be something where it has to phase into it, but those are all things we need the town needs to think about and consider moving forward. How many people in general in the community center that size are? Todd, I think I'm not correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the recreation and park staff wouldn't change. You'd most likely they have a full time facility manager who's managing the facility. Um, a lot of the programs that would go on are currently like what we have right now are contracted instructors. So you've got a lot of instructors coming. And then your front desk is your other area that you need to cover. And you're covering that with probably you know, a full time person. And then as Eric said, depending on how much you want to keep it open, you're um, staffing it with a lot of part time people covering that. So, you know, right now we're a department of two. So I wouldn't say any more than probably full and part time staff than basic, you know, a dozen people less, maybe. And then all your programming, like I said, going on is. Instructors coming in, and contracted, and that kind of stuff. Then that's a rough guess. Yeah. Yeah. And certainly, you know, the part time staffers with, with cover for that front desk area. So, all, all important things that need to be flushed out throughout this process. Jason? Yeah, Jason, with the Wilson Fair. Um, does the town currently own any land in that book? We have, a, I believe, a small piece of land in Maple Tree Place, but. Uh, I don't know the exact acreage, but it, it wouldn't be large enough to, to cover something of, of this potential scope. Uh, Jacob? I'll try to use the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch your step. Rarely have I watched a presentation like this and had a lot of aha moments. But the thought process was really good and really well represented. I wanted to make a couple of comments. The first is that we do need recreation facilities in the growth center because we're adding population. Right now we have no recreational facilities there except for the new rec space. <laughs> um, and so I feel like it's really good to anticipate that need. Along with that, it actually increases the value of the surrounding land for developers because of that as a draw. And I hope that we do something like a TIF district where we can raise funds for something like this on future tax revenue that we can anticipate from the increased value that it gives to the area. Um, on a smaller scale, back here in, in the village, the, um, it's always hard to work with an older building, but you've done a good job. And I like the idea of keeping the library here as part of the Civic Center. Um, as a band member, um, this plan takes away about a good chunk of the existing space that's used weekly in the summer or every other week for concerts um, and then the 4th of July festivities. And some of us remember losing the amount we lost in the last library edition because we liked the space the way it was previously. And one possibility for dealing with that is to move the gazebo or perhaps have it be a more of a shell, a van shell, farther away from the library so that the space between that and the library was expanded, but I, I would like, if, if it 
if it goes ahead like this, that the plan is made to make the green work for uh, concerts and Fourth of July festivities. So, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chapin. That, that came up multiple times at the committee. We've been thinking about the use of the bandstand and, and the, the, uh, the physical layout of the green and potential for those amenities as well on the outside. Yeah. Yep, perfect. Um, it was mentioned that there were some cons for the pool, and obviously the price is a key one, but are there other, what are the other cons that people bring up for the pool? John, Carla, you want to take that? As far as the pool goes, it was, um, it was, it was not a surprise that there was very strong opinion about the pool. And the committee spent many, many hours and many meetings talking about the pool um, specifically. And it's, I think that ultimately that the decision that was made is the fact that the pool is one aspect, but there are a lot of other needs. And at this point, it's the priority would be to get the many other needs set up and with the option to add a pool at a time that it seems to be feasible. So that's that's kind of the pool. That's I'm just curious, this, these are the, the cons that people have brought up in the surveys. It's that there are a lot of people I mentioned had strong opinions pros and cons, so I was curious what like the community's cons are. I think generally it was the price. Okay. And in that kind of trade-off. And so I think that we ended up trading off with putting the, the potential for a pool to be there, but not necessarily in this first first round. So, thank you. I, again, I don't have all that data right in front of me, but the pools are not only expensive to build, but they're very expensive to, to operate as well. It's, it, it requires some very specific construction. Uh, it, it's, it's actually a pretty harsh environment. Um, so I think that it, and it requires a fair amount of staffing as well. Talk about the staffing for, for all those other programs. Well, the pool is probably just as much again, um, just because there's there's some tremendous liability issues in the pool that don't exist in other uh, other facilities. So I think there's a lot of I mean, the, the word cloud we had. It was much smaller, but there was one on there that said no pool. <laughs> so that was said often enough that it actually got it on the on the word cloud. <laughs> I might just add briefly that there weren't so much cons as just people who weren't interested at all in the pool and didn't want to spend that much money on something that they weren't interested in. Good, good question. That so I know the committee was looking at primarily the indoor pool concept, but I. Um, anyone from the committee, feel free to jump in here too. One, one of the things that came up from the committee was you know, looking to potentially add a pool, whether it's attached to this facility or an outdoor standalone pool, is really going to require a lot of just specific focus, and it's probably a, a separate committee charge just to look at that. We, we talked a little bit about how other municipalities operate indoor, outdoor pools, primarily outdoor. Uh, St. Albans has a bubble they put over in the winter as well. Um, we've got a couple of comparables preliminarily from other things states but um, that's where the committee landed there that uh, should should the pool concept be advanced further and needed that kind of that indoor outdoor um, consideration as well yeah, on, on the pool as well an outdoor pool you're only going to get a few months and you're trying to hire staff and right now lifeguarding staff um, seasonal lifeguard staff seasonal staff go anywhere is very difficult to get you have the full time, if you have an indoor pool, then you can hire the full time staff. Um, but as Eric said, that's, you know, that staffing could be three or four people just lifeguarding, depending on what you have in the pool, pools. And the other thing, too, is if you build a rectangular type of pool that you see all, around the area, and you have lab swimmers, you've got usually like two people per lab, maybe you have four labs, that's eight people. But if you put in a playground, spray ground, that type of thing, uh, lazy river where resistant walking can be done, now you can serve.
pools typically lose money. Um, as John said, they're, they're expensive to build. As Eric said, they're expensive to staff. But if you have that other component of more of a, not a I don't want to say a water park, but that kind of component of things that, that goes on, people will come and just use that, and you can serve more people in doing that. So the, the pool is definitely, you know, hopefully an option, but it's a phase one, whereas you can uh, use this basic stuff to start bringing in money, and then save to build that second phase. Was there any serious consideration given to having a dog park? A lot of people have dogs. I think it would be quite popular and probably I don't really know, but not a lot to maintain. Sure. Yeah, um, we definitely heard that. You know, the, the focus primarily was an indoor facility, but it came up with a siting question too. If you have a have a site that has um, ample room with outdoor spaces, thinking about a dog park component there too. And it's been brought up a number of times. Um, but also thinking about the right location for a dog park. If it's if it's in the growth center and it's close to a lot of residential area, is, is that the right fit? So it's it's not something that, that's been ruled out, but it's gonna probably depend on the site if that's a facility to think about at the same time. Uh, Jim? Yes, Jim McCullough. It is getting closer to Chair um, Kennedy's hour, I think. And I want to make certain that all of us here recognize our select board and, and our town manager for bringing the Black River design project forward in the budget from last year, making this happen. This community has needed um, both of these spaces since forever. And I personally want to stand now as I am and thank all of you for that work, and um, I, I'm sure I'm speaking for many of us in the room. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everyone. Other questions? Questions from the select board? Yeah. <laughs> Anything from the Michelin Library trustees, chair, trustees? If you ask me to speak, I'm going to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and say, um, those of us who serve on the library board love our library so much. And there's always a little moment that we have to talk about the books that we're reading at our board meetings. And so, I just want to thank especially Carla who, who helped represent us in this process. We're so excited to think about a library that's more functional for our community, that meets our community's needs, and it honestly just brings a tear in my eye to see there was the, the perception that our library is the heart of our community. I just love that so much. But also the amazing opportunities of a community and recreation um, center as well, and knowing that our library doesn't meet the needs of the community when it comes to our need for space, for connecting, and I think the pandemic kind of showed us how we long for that, and our library is just such an amazing place, but there's so much more potential. So this is making me feel very hopeful for the next phase of figuring out how do we pay for something like this and help meet our growing and changing community. So thanks to everyone involved in this. Charlie? Hey, uh, Charlie McGill. Is it possible to go ahead with a, a library uh, expansion without waiting for the community center to all the work? Yep. No, certainly that, that would all be part of the discussion moving forward. You know, um, there's going to be anticipated need to borrow money here and the select board to, wants to advance this project to decide how to, how to approach that question. Uh, Angela? Hi. Is there any hope for a return of public transportation to the village or any um, anything else 
other than you know a green mountain transit or something like microtransit or other options that would make this you know what is potentially an expanded and it, even more incredible library accessible to even more people. Yeah, a good question that that came up with the committee as well. Um, we got some grant money last year for a microtransit pilot study um, that our planning department's wrapping up. The planning commission is going to be looking at that, and the select board will be, be shared that uh, report as well. You know, the um, I've read it, and kind of the, you know, the synopsis is the microtransit is viable, and it would be a good application of Wilson. Um, probably no surprise, it's expensive to operate for the scope. So. As uh, the town's discussing ARPA funds, I've made the, uh, some recommendations, suggestions for the select board to think about what might be a microtransit pilot study, uh, allocating some funds, maybe um, using that over uh, a month or six weeks to see what the real ridership and, and interest in the community is. And for folks who aren't familiar, microtransit's um, kind of a, a smaller scale, on-demand um, uh, ride share that a public entity would operate. So think about kind of an, an Uber bus that the town would um, help facilitate with maybe an app to um, hail a ride from the village to, to tap corners with a more on-demand frequency. Um, Chip is not his head, so I know he's <laughs> it's our green mountain transit ultimate. <laughs> um, so that's certainly, it's certainly a very important piece of this, and I, we hear a lot of transportation um, for, for folks in town to get from one place to another with, with more frequency. Can I add to that? Sure. Eric? I realize I didn't say my name before either. I'm Jacob Cater. Um, <laughs> and yes, for the last 10 years, I've been the uh, commissioner for Green Mountain Transit of the continent. And um, I'm, Williston is very forward looking to be looking at microtransit. There is a demonstration microtransit project that's a year old in Montpelier. And, and we at Green Mountain Transit are operating it and um, learning from that. And one of the key things is that it does not replace fixed route service, so it adds to it, solves a last mile problem for a lot of people who otherwise couldn't use fixed route service because they can't get to a bus stop. And you could also think of it a lot like an Uber service with SSTA buses. Um, and it's a great uh, thing for equity, that really transportation is an equity issue and where we locate things has a, have equity implications. And so I appreciate the question because I think uh, Williston is doing a good job of looking at trying to expand transportation services, and that's one important way. Um, we had uh, one of those 2050 uh, roundtable uh, sessions on Saturday, and at my table, I would say that across the different topics that they were um, discussing, that um, many transportation piece was a really, really strong one for my people. People were saying that, you know, as you get older, you're still going to be in your home, but everybody loves, like, the library. But they said, what happens if we can't drive anymore, but we still want to be able to go to the things that are at the library? And so rather than thinking of a huge transit bus, that was the topic that was that got the most If folks aren't familiar, the goals of 2050 um, effort round tables is for the writing of our new town plan. The planning department is, is offering those. There's a couple more coming up in the next, next couple of weeks. I think one's over Zoom and a couple other uh, physical locations to visit as well. It's my plug if you go on the town website. Would a like, expansion to the library bring more traffic to the school in the matter? Question. I'm, I didn't hear the question. Um, expansion to the library would bring more traffic to the school area. Let me take that one, Jay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure any expansion would, hopefully, you would want to bring more patrons in. Um, as far as the traffic at um, the school dismissal time, you know, I don't think that will change. People tend to avoid the library for those 30 minutes. And if you, you know, have never visited the library during those 30 minutes, you'd learn quickly 
Um, so in, in that respect, the rest of the day, I would think traffic would be spread out and the additional parking would definitely help. Well, yeah, because it was said that um, much traffic and like managing the traffic flow was a concern for the library earlier in the slideshow. Did you hear that? Yes. Managing the traffic flow would be Yeah. Thanks for the question. Yeah. As a, as a committee member, we've talked a lot about parking and uh, traffic and, and all of that. That, is, that was a, a major consideration for us. I think we probably talked about it in nearly every conversation we had about the library being in its existing site and being expanded. Um, and obviously that conversation pattern will probably continue as the, you know, if the next phase um, We actually, I, I just did a comparison of our hours to area libraries and uh, adding hours is something you do gradually, it obviously it impacts staffing. Um, if you were to build a bigger facility, you'd probably, people would expect to have, have more hours. And so that's a, you know, something to look at long term and to plan for. mentioned it much during the presentation but one of the other things about <clears throat> the proposed library expansion would be it, it would be important to locate that meeting room in such a way for the larger programs for, for community use after hours and we would do it in such a way that you could have people use that space have the library closed while they're in there and then they would leave by a separate e exit and not have to go to the library we've done that in two or three other libraries in the area it's been extremely successful. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm telling charity, but um, the, uh, with, with the library and the parking and the traffic and whatnot, you know, design is a series of compromises. <laughs> and we're really trying to weigh, you know, the pluses and minuses there. And I think that ultimately the, the decision-making process was such that the advantage of having a library in the village adjacent to the school uh, as part of that civic center of, of Williston outweighed some of those nagging little inconveniences of, of the traffic. Uh, question. Just one more question. Um, Perceptually, that's a, that's a real issue, and if, if people think that that money is available for savings, then it's it, then it's worthwhile. Um, I think we we talked about a lot of things on trying to figure out how to improve the park and get the library. This one was better, and that it's already an area of the green. It's it's not really developed. It's also that you can get from it to the library without having to cross any driveways. And I thought we we felt that was a real plus. That right now, if you park like I am over beside the, uh, behind the old brick church, you have to cross that driveway, which is exactly the, the driveway where all the parents are driving in and out to get their students. So we're trying to not do that. Uh, I just also want to add, from wearing my trustee hat now too, um, 
we all, the trustees felt very strongly about staying here and having an expansion. And part of that is to keep the town center viable. Um, there's a lot that goes on in our town center. And the library is a big part of that. The school and the library and the recreation fields, those are like the, the three, you know, the three legs of, of the tripod, I guess. And if the library were to leave, that would, that would be a big emotional and, um, you know, and physical gap, even, even if we went to the, the growth center. And I, I think that the trustees also would echo this. The way that this is going to be done is going to be something that's going to ultimately be value added to the town center. And um, you know the, the the preliminary drawings that we have make me feel really confident about that. Yes, there are the issues about the parking. I like what you said about doing something about the bandstand and that you would be open about maybe moving it. That was great to hear because that's something that we were also considering. Also, and I think that that's good. Um, so I I think ultimately this is going to be a value added change for the town group. So, any other questions? Oh, I want to I want to thank everyone for coming out on a, on a rainy Monday night in October here. Um, it's really great to see so many people with interest in this really important topic. Um, if, you, if you leave tonight and you think of a question like, oh, I wish I'd asked that, just give me a call or an email and make sure we get you your question answered. Um, so if you want to read the full report, I'll... <laughs> Here it is. Um, we've got some physical copies. Um, we'll have one of these at the library and town hall, I think, and you can also just download it online as well. Um, so we'll, we'll turn back to the, the select board and this will be a, a, a topic for discussion. So, and then, yeah, to reiterate, this this information is on the town website. So uh, uh, I know it might be a little difficult to see, uh, but please do go to the website to um, answer more of your questions. If, uh, and for that matter, reach out to us, reach out to Eric, reach out to anybody uh, if you have any questions or concerns. Um, the, uh, but that, so that, that concludes the um, community question and answer. The rest of the meeting tonight is a standard select board meeting. Uh, just so you're aware, the, uh, the next item is other business. <laughs> Always sometimes there's none. Um, uh, and then uh, final thoughts on the agenda items and then our attorney. Absolutely welcome to stay. You don't have to. Uh, it's, a, it's a free uh, But uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you very much.